Good morning, everyone. Uh, Mr. John Goya, Executive Director, Southeast Asia, U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Of Nga Kuit Ping, Vice President of Cam uh, Cambodia Chamber of Commerce. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> it is a great pleasure for me to, over, um, to preside over the U.S. Cambodia Business Forum, which reflects the critical importance of strengthening bilateral ties between Cambodia and the United States. Based on the principle of mutual effect, shared interests, and common values. Today's event is timely and relevant for our two countries, given the uncertainty adversely affecting the world economy, amid multiple challenges and emerging mega trends. I wish to take this opportunity to express my deep appreciation to the co-hosts the Cambodian Chamber of Commerce and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce for organizing this important event to promote business, investment, trade opportunities, as well as bilateral economic ties overall. Undeniably, cooperation between the two countries is mutually beneficial. The United States benefits from Cambodia's strategic geographic advantage and a large pool of young, low-cost workers with skills suitable for manufacturing. This translates into low prices of goods for American consumers and access to U.S. market for Cambodian exports. The United States and Cambodia have a long history of friendship and cooperation that dates back to 1950, when diplomatic ties were established. Thanks to continued improvement in diplomatic relations, economic ties between the two countries have flourished. Two-way trade hit $13.3 billion last year. And the United States remains Cambodia's largest export market, especially for garments, textile, footwear, and travel goods. Direct investment from the United States to Cambodia is relatively small, despite the U.S. being one of the largest source of foreign direct investment worldwide. In Cambodia, direct investment from the U.S. rose from $225 million in 2010 to $893 million last year. U.S. multinational recently investing in Cambodia include Ford, Coca-Cola, Tiffany, General Electric, reflecting the growing size of Cambodian market and sustained growth in, in people's income. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, with full peace, Cambodia has firmly maintained order, security, social safety, and political stability. Like the United States, Cambodia believes in freedom and is rooted in democracy as enshrined in our constitutions. The Royal Government of Cambodia is fully committed to multi-party democracy and respect for human rights. For foreign investors, a politically stable country with a fast-growing economy is an attractive destination. In light of the global hardship caused by the COVID pandemic, the Royal Government of Cambodia has proven that Cambodia is more than just resilient and victorious in battles. As one of the first fully vaccinated countries, we reopened early, and despite global economic turmoil, Cambodia is making significant strides with growth forecasts to reach 5.6% this year. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, with the aim of becoming a high-income country by 2050, the Royal Government of Cambodia has laid out its Pentagon strategy as socio-economic development agenda for the next 25 years. It has five priorities. People, roads, water, electricity, and technology. To address the fourth industrial revolution and the digital de revolutions, the strategy has a strong focus on development of human capital and digital technology. I wish to stress that the main objective of the Pentagon strategy are twofold. On the one hand, to maintain the momentum of peace, sustained growth, and development in general. On the other, to reinforce the foundation for accelerating inclusive national development by building resilience in five priority areas. The public sector, the economy, the financial sectors, 
humans and social capital and the environment, including climate change, as Ong Nha Kutpeng has stressed briefly described about. With this commitment to strong inclusive institutions, the royal government will accelerate reforms and introduce measures to address structural issues and challenges that Cambodia has passed, faced in the past, especially with business and investment climate. This has often been cited as one of the main challenges to Cambodia's competitiveness in the global market. To this end, the royal government of Cambodia is focusing on six important matters. One, streamlining administrative procedures. Two, cutting transport and logistic costs. Three, improving infrastructure such as roads, bridges, ports, airports, railroads, and power supply to facilitate connectivity and trade. At the end of this year, we're going to open two major airports in Cambodia, one in Siem Reap, and one early next year in Phnom Penh to facilitate all this growth. Four, promoting vocational and skill training. This is quite an important. Human resources is quite a, is a key to attracting and adapting our economy to the new changing world. Five, improving good governance. Six, introducing a modern and liberal investment law. This law includes incentive to attract quality investment in priority sectors such as technology, automotive, electronic, green energy, and health care. With this, I would like to note that the law also includes provisions which allow us the flexibility to cater to exact need of industries or investments, to allow us for flexibility to be more competitive and be realistic in terms of attracting and adjusting to the needs of investments. In addition to the reform, the Royal Government of Cambodia will intensify its dialogue with the business community through regular forums, involving public and private sectors. Residing over this forum from, year to, from this year, I will listen to the challenges, concern, and suggestions raised by domestic and foreign businesses and investors, and seek to provide effective solutions and responses. And in November this year, the Royal Government of Cambodia will hold the 19th Government Private Sector Forum, like you mentioned, with the aim to eff of effectively and seriously taking, uh, tackling investment hurdles and improving the overall business and investment climate, especially facing the slowing down economic uh, worldwide. I tasked the DPM on Paul Manera, the Minister of Economic Finance, to do consultation with all the sectors involved so that we can understand clearly what is the need to uh, and what are the challenges that businesses uh, needed so we can uh, improvise the solutions to have during this time. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the world economy is interconnected and increasingly interdependent. One economy's health can rapidly be affected by other economies, mainly through connectivity, especially in the areas of trade and investments. This suggests that it's beyond doubt that constantly increasing cooperation among countries in trade, investment, and other forms of collaboration will benefit us all. Cambodia continues to expand its market by integrating into global supplies and value chains. And through free trade agreement, these are both bilateral and multilateral bilateral mechanisms such as the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement, the Cambodia-China Free Trade Agreement, the Cambodia-Korea Free Trade Agreement, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership or ASEAN. These serve as exports gateways to larger markets for goods made by U.S. company in Cambodia. Before ending my remark, I would like to invite U.S. investors and business people to visit Cambodia and early this year I have a opportunity to meet the delegation from the U.S. organized by U.S. Business Council and ASEAN Business Council. I'd like to see that uh, this will happen regularly and be happy to uh, meet you and welcome you again in Cambodia at uh, my new capacity in the government and I hope that uh, 
you find Cambodia as many opportunities uh, to investment and learn more about our economic and investment potential opportunities. There's no, uh, in Cambodia we say, seeing one time is better than here a thousand times. So please come visit us. For investment in Cambodia, the royal government is committed to ensuring a conductive, conducive environment for business operation and expansions. We are addressing challenges, both old and new, to accelerate, accelerate the full development of the private sector as key government partner to promote inclusive development for mutual benefit and shared prosperity. For this, if you know my background, I study economic and uh, use I am not really a big on the government intervention in the market. So, but that has to be regulated, whether it's private sector self-regulations or government do. The private sector can be a more active role in regulating. For business, I believe that business know about business better than governments. The role of government is to support. We're providing framework and providing the necessary incentive to support the functioning. As my new government, <coughs> I have consulted with private sector in Cambodia to see how we can be a more active partners. How can private sectors not just being advisors or give us ideas, but also when we have agreement can help us to implement. Two, as a, I guess, enforcer of the agreement between the government. And the so the government, if the private sector is functioning more perfectly, is better, more competitive environment, the government will take back step and less involved. And this is my view. So we hope that private sector could be of a more uh, partner for us and the new mechanism and new drive in the futures, we hope that we can be of a better, more active role. It's in our saying that sing together, act together, and responsible together. So that is uh, our concept in the futures, and we want to, uh, to see this uh, role of private sector become more engagement. And uh, to conclude, I visit the US a Cambodia Business Forum, great access and excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for good health, for you success in your endeavor. And my apologies, there's a certain uh, request for meeting, but because I have to run for the, uh, the UN to get up meet, but we hope that uh, your engagement here, you have chance to talk with our you know, Cambodian businesses and the US businesses can meet each other, make connections, get to know each other, <coughs> At least you have some friends, you have more friends. And you go to Cambodia, you don't worry about get lost, you have friends there. <laughs> and that is the most important thing, people connection through trade, investment, through all form. And this is the foundations of relationship between countries. It's the peoples to peoples. And hope that our businesses, Cambodian businesses and the US businesses can form this uh, relationship and seek opportunities not just in businesses, but also in relations and together. And hope to, uh, through this, we can uh, raise the cooperation and level of cooperation between our two countries become more active. And thank you very much for opportunity to address this. Thank you.